Hello everybody, this is Albert with Green Tea House. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to give the 101 on our Berry Rose Bouquet. Now before we begin, I highly recommend you check out our back catalog of episodes and I'll make sure to put some episodes up here that are germane to this episode. Now, Berry Rose Bouquet. Why do we have this unique blend? Well, I think it's a couple of things. So Casey's a big fan of uh, herbals or tisanes, that proper term, that have a, a kind of a fruity taste. And you might go to coffee shops or maybe you purchase them at your grocery store or online, blueberry tea, strawberry tea, something that's got a little fruit in it. And understand a lot of these teas are not really, like when you get a blueberry tea, it's not all gonna be dried blueberry petals. They're gonna put natural flavors in there and we don't sell anything that's got natural flavors. Everything we sell is the actual ingredients in there. But there are people who do like kind of a berry flavored tea and we are sensitive to that and so that's why we did this tea. Now the principal ingredient in Berry Rose Bouquet is actually not a berry, it's robos. Now I'll make sure I put the episode up here. What is robose tea? I'll also put the banner up here on what is a dessert tea because robose is commonly used for sweeter teas. And why is that? So just to back it up, robose, otherwise known as red tea, or many, many times it's mispronounced, ruabos, is from Southern Africa. It's from a shrub in Southern Africa. And when you drink it, it kind of has like an undertone of vanilla. Even if you drink just straight out robos. It's got a vanilla taste to it and it's not caffeinated. So there are people that like that flavor, but more often than not, you're gonna see a lot of blends come from this because it has a natural vanilla flavor and people you know, like vanilla. So you're gonna find a lot of dessert teas or what we would call sweet teas. Like a dessert tea that we have, our special blend is the dark chocolate mint tea. That's a dessert tea. You can drink it at night with milk and sugar, and it's just naturally sweet. So you can see, and that one's a black tea, by the way. It's not robose based, it's black tea based. And that's the other kind of base that you find for dessert teas. A lot of robose and then a lot of uh, uh, black teas. So with the robo, you're getting a natural vanilla undertone. And so then we throw in some fruit blends, and I wanna make sure I take a picture and show you what's in here. So we throw in two rosy things, rose petals, in rose hip. These are two separate things, even though they sound similarly. Rose hip is a great tisane. It's really good for your digestive health. And, and more often than not, when people drink rose hip, they drink it for its, its cold, kind of uh, flu-like uh, reason. So if, you, if you're under the weather, because it's high in antioxidants. So we got rose hip in there, and then we got rose petals. And then you throw in lavender, which of course, has a great taste. We have a chamomile lavender here that we sell, and lavender is known to be calming uh, anxiety. It, it, it tends to help with anxiety and insomnia. And then we throw in the blueberry, and the blueberry just has a great appearance to it and a great subtle sweetness to it. So when you look at this tisane, it's very fruity, but also kind of floral at the same time with hints of vanilla. And it's just a great, great, non-caffeinated herbal drink, tisane drink. I would recommend, even though I have it here hot, and you can look at the liquor or the liqueur, it kind of has an amber kind of look to it. I'd recommend you drink this cold, but that's just me. I like my tisanes cold, and in particular, something that's fruity is a great cold brew. And we'll have a video here on the easiest ways to cold brew your teas and at the tea store at green tea house in green we will be selling some cold brews already prepackaged in a glass bottle and who knows maybe this one will be one of them but if you're going to steep it if you're going to do a typical brew what i would recommend is about a teaspoon to a teaspoon of a half of course you can do four teaspoons if you want to do four teaspoons if you really want to get the potency out of it but standard one would be about a teaspoon to half a teaspoon of it and then you're going to do full boil water so 212, and then normally for tisanes, I like to do a long steep. So you've heard me in past episodes, when it comes to the Camellia sinensis plant, I typically, and again, everybody has different things that they do, short steep, long steep. I typically would do about two and a half minute to three minute steep on the Camellia sinensis ones. On, on, on the lighter greens, like the Japanese green, I might do a much shorter one, like one minute, but as a whole, two and a half minutes, and I'll, and I'll, I'll steep it two more times. 
With tis sayings like this one, what I do, and of course you don't have to pay attention to why I hear what I do here, is I like to do like one long steep. I'll do like a six minute steep on boiling water, and then maybe I'll re-steep one time, but uh, sometimes I don't re-steep at all. But that's just me with the tis sayings. I have a different relationship with tis sayings than I do with the tea plant. In review, this tea, this tisane, I should say, very vanilla undertoned, and then you go and you throw in the rosy fruitiness of it, the, the kind of the delicate nature of rose hip and rose petal, and then you throw in the blueberry, which gives it that very floral, fruity uh, taste. And I just think it's an amazing tisane drink, and I recommend that you check it out. Guys, post in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, take care. God bless.